Watts. She's the Ohio woman who was charged with a felony crime after she suffered a miscarriage. Last fall, Brittany Watts was 21 weeks pregnant when doctors told her that her pregnancy was not viable. After experiencing frustrating delays at the hospital, she eventually had a miscarriage at home. Now, this is her first TV interview, and she and her attorney sat down with national correspondent Jerika Duncan. We need to warn you here that some of you may find the contents of this report disturbing. Jerika, good morning to you. Good morning to you. And the United States miscarriages impact as many as one in four women who know they're pregnant. Women over 30 are likely to have miscarriages, and if you are a black woman, that rate is even higher. Brittany Watts fell into both categories, but those factors didn't matter when police arrested her following a miscarriage that not only changed her life, she says it motivated her to help others. Warren, Ohio. I was born here. I was raised here. Outside of a courthouse in Warren, Ohio, a rally planned in support of Brittany Watts turned into a celebration after a grand jury announced Watts would not be charged with a felony. I'm truly honored and grateful that you all have come to support me, and we are not done fighting. Thank you so much. How would you describe Brittany Watts before all of this happened? No one knew my name. <laughs> I was quiet most of the time, just minding my own business. The 34-year-old medical receptionist was in her second trimester of what she thought was a healthy pregnancy. But on September 19th, I noticed that I was leaking the fluid and it was it was uncomfortable. I, I didn't know if I had used the bathroom on myself or what was going on. And this is when your water broke, but you didn't know that. Correct. I went to my OBGYN once I started bleeding and so I'm thinking something's not right. And what ultimately did the doctor tell you that meant about the health of your baby? That there was still a faint heartbeat, but the pregnancy was going to be non-viable. Medical records show Watts was taken by ambulance to Mercy Health St. Joseph Warren Hospital, where doctors confirmed the fetus would not survive. I waited in the hospital, waiting for the doctor to come in or call, and I kept asking whoever would come in to check my vitals, I said, have you heard anything? Mm -hmm. And they were like, oh, well, we're still waiting. We're still waiting. I'm like, okay. After being monitored for eight hours in the hospital, she decided to leave against medical advice, despite warnings of potentially fatal complications. I was frustrated. I felt ignored. Then I returned the next day thinking, that there was going to be an induction or something. On the second day, Watts stayed for nearly 11 hours, waiting to be induced, but that never happened. So they put an IV in you, but that was the extent of any process to induce the yes, pregnancy. Correct. Okay. Watts's case had been referred to the hospital's ethics committee, in part because medical staff reported concerns that Watts was using the phrase abortion when discussing the next steps of her care. Ohio law bans abortions after 22 weeks with exceptions for life-saving care. At the time, Watts was 21 weeks and six days pregnant. In a statement, Mercy Health told CBS News, quote, while the legislative environment has placed an increased focus on the necessity and importance of ethical reviews, our mission compels us to provide compassionate care to all. But Watts and her attorney say no one told her the ethics committee was even involved. And I'm like, okay, <laughs> nobody knows I'm here. I need to know something. And I was getting frustrated again. Records show it took more than six hours for the committee to decide she could be induced, despite doctors warning that they needed to act before Watts was, quote, on death's door. I'm scared. I'm like... There's a non-viable pregnancy in me. Right. Am I going to die? Is there something that you're not telling me that I really, really need to know? So you're worried about your health, too, at this point. Exactly. So I left again without being treated. Two days later, she miscarried. I go to the bathroom. I sit down on the toilet. And I'm just, I'm doubled over. And then that's when I hear... Splash. And then I look down. There's blood. 
And I'm like, okay, well, I have to get cleaned up. All while thinking, wow, did that really just happen? But it really just happened. I'm really awake right now. This is really what, what life is now. For the third time, Watts returned to the hospital. The nurse comes in and she's rubbing my back and uh, talking to me and saying everything's going to be okay. Little do I know, the nurse that was comforting me and saying that everything was going to be okay was the one who called the police. I had a mother who um, had a delivery at home and came in without the baby and I need to have someone go find this baby or direct me what I need to do. Did she say if the baby was alive or not? She said she didn't want to look, she didn't want the baby, and she didn't look. The nurse said that you said you didn't want to look and that you did not want the baby. Do you remember saying that? I said I did not want to look. I've never said I, I didn't want my baby. I would have never said something like that. It just makes me angry that somebody would put those type of words in my mouth to make me seem so callous and so, so hateful. A nurse called police at the direction of the hospital's risk management team. Watts was later arrested by the Warren Police Department and charged with abuse of a corpse, a felony carrying up to a $2,500 fine and up to one year in prison. I want to thank my community. Two weeks ago, an Ohio grand jury declined to indict Watts. So why do you think they were quick to charge you? Because of my skin color, honestly. And because there are no laws behind what you are to do in this situation. She was painted in this picture of a young, unmarried black woman that did not comply with their orders to keep waiting. And they weaponized the police. Why talk about this now publicly? Because I don't want any other woman to go through what I had to go through. How would you describe the Brittany Watts today? Motivated, because now that the charges have been dropped, I'm ready to get to work, making sure that the laws are changed and people are educated on what to do for something that happens all the time. And, you know, as the old saying goes, history repeats itself. I don't want it to happen in this case. In a statement after the grand jury's decision, the Trumbull County prosecutor said after a careful evaluation of both sides, physicians interviewing witnesses and researching and applying the law, this office believes Brittany Watts did not violate the Ohio criminal statute of abuse of a corpse. CBS News reached out to warn police, but they did not return our request for comment. I really feel for her and, and applaud her for speaking up this way. There are so many layers and it's so complicated. So many layers. It yeah. just seems like she was let down repeatedly, though, to right. go by the hospital. From going to the hospital, um, obviously hoping to get a certain level of care. Yes. Um, but even I, I think what was really uh, shocking in all of this, too, is hearing that she said, you know, the police went back to her home. Yes. They're looking for the baby. They find this baby, this fetus. In the, toilet, in the toilet, and they remove the toilet and take mm -hmm. it to the coroner's office as part of the evidence. Mm -hmm. So just the levels that they went to to try to prosecute this woman. Also, the she was always told that the baby was not going to survive. It's not, not survive right. because of the water right. breaking. Correct. Yes. yes. I mean, what I could maybe I'm naive. I, I think everyone's trying to do their best. Police don't. They're they're trying to uh, they they're trying to to enforce a law that they did not pass, right? So I think the issue really is the legal confusion. It's not their law, it's the state's oh, yeah. law. It's not like they were advocating to go, you know, charge this criminal. There, there's a law, they're, they're, they've been called. They're but doing their job. To me, the issue is the legal confusion over what happens in a case like hers where she's been told it's not viable. Right. And, and so, so then what happens next? Every day, you know, women go through miscarriages yeah. every single day, but... In this particular case, abuse of a corpse is the corpse is not defined. Yes. So that's what the argument was on the legal side. How do you define a corpse? And there was no movement of this fetus. You know, yeah. it was in the toilet. So the question becomes, 
what is a woman supposed to do I'm, when this happens? Yeah. I'm still what, stuck on how the hospital has. So many people have yeah. so stuck on that. And the yeah. phone call to the yes, place. That she went back, yes, well, they, that they, she they, went back twice to the hospital. That's yeah. why they're referring to the legislative environment. They're basically saying, we're confused, we don't know. That nurse who called, yeah. she's saying, I don't know. All right. so